Katmai National Park is located on the Alaska Peninsula and sits on the Ring of Fire, an arc of intense volcanic activity that circles the Pacific Ocean. There are 14 active volcanoes in Katmai. In 1912, one of those volcanoes blew its top, spewing out massive volumes of ash and pumice, making Novarupta the largest eruption of the 20th century. It was 30 times bigger than the Mount St. Helens eruption. There was so much ash that it blocked the sun's rays and actually lowered temperatures in the Northern Hemisphere for half a year. Five years after the eruption, an explorer named Robert Griggs found an eerie landscape around the volcano, bursting with so many steam vents, he dubbed it the Valley of 10,000 Smokes. We're going to retrace his steps? Be careful, because this is really deep and travel back through time to that eerie landscape to see what's left of that still active volcano. Before the eruption, the Valley of 10,000 Smokes was covered in lush green vegetation, spruce forests, and of course, bears. Now, 40 square miles are buried in up to 700 feet of ash. Woo. We've got a long day ahead of us. We've got 12 miles. We're gonna be walking on hundreds of feet of volcanic ash. And not to mention, we have rivers to cross. And we're told one can be extremely treacherous. The terrain is mostly ash and looks a lot like the surface of the moon. So much so that the Apollo astronauts trained here during the 1960s feel completely out of my element, and I'm loving it. It's about 2. Uh, it gets dark at 10, and we probably got another 7 miles. <laughs> so we got to get rolling. We are flying by the seat of our pants here. We alternate between looking for our second river crossing and keeping an eye on our mountain. Some of the brush has grown back, but the ground is still covered with all this ash, and it's slippery ash. Look at Oh. 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 Ah. You okay? Yeah. Gosh. Well, as you can see, I just fell down and a rock jammed into my back. We've been going for miles and miles. This is where you start to slowly lose your wits. We're starting to get worried. The sun is going down behind the mountain, our water supply is running low, and we keep coming up to gorges that we hope are the river, and they're not. It's 8 p.m., and we're running out of time and options. Suddenly, we hear running water, and that's a good sign because we have to cross one more river before we can get to our shelter. Not only do we have to cross a river that's gonna be treacherous, that's gonna govern the rest of our trip. If it's too bad, we're not even gonna make it to Novarupta. Not to mention the fact that we have to fill up our water there, which has to last us the next two days. This is huge. I'm looking at the sun, it's going over the mountain there. We still have about, I'd say four miles to go. That's four miles just to get close to Baked Mountain and those makeshift research huts that are supposed to be our shelter for the night. You wanna be somewhat secluded and enclosed and out here, there is nothing for miles and miles. You're exposed to the elements. You see my shirt? That's gonna be our tent if we don't make it to Baked Mountain, and right now the clock's ticking. Yeah. We gotta get going, dude. Man, do you feel that wind? This is the valley I was expecting. The wind is really starting to pick up. It's getting in my eyes, my mouth, and there's absolutely nothing out here to block it. We're following the river, but it just keeps getting worse. The current is getting stronger, and we've encountered a wicked waterfall. This thing's deep. It drops down about 40 feet straight down. And e even if it was closer, I wouldn't risk jumping it. My biggest fear right now is that it was back there a ways, and we somehow missed where we were supposed to cross the river. Reality is starting to sink in. Even if we find a place to cross this river, we're not gonna be able to get to our shelter in time. We're gonna have to camp in the middle of this valley. Here we go, okay. Woo! Suddenly, just beyond the waterfall, Colton thinks he spots an opening in the river. Okay, that's it. That, that's a little better. We still gotta get up there and see what it actually looks like from bird's eye, but that's much better than this. We found what we think is gonna be our river crossing. It's widened out between two little narrow sections, which means it's not gonna be as deep and the current won't be roiling like they are, you know, like it is through there. 
We've been told to always check the depths of the water of these rivers that we're crossing. Ash is soft, so there could be 20 to 30 foot drop offs that are just carved out in the middle and we would never see them coming. Plus, there are rocks and if we slip, we could be carried downstream. Because this water is ashy, it's murky, you can't see your footing. So having a walking stick really lets you know what your next step is gonna be. Cause without it, you're going in there blind. Oh. Oh. This water is freezing. So now, not only do we have to worry about what we're stepping on and what's ahead of us, we have to worry about our legs cramping up cause this is so cold. All right, here's where the current's picking up, dude. Be careful. We have to make sure that every step we take is a strong one because down the river, there's a massive waterfall. So if we fall in, there's a good chance we're going right over it. Is it getting deeper? Uh, it's really silty, so you're gonna, gonna kind of cave in. Oh, it's cold. Oh my gosh. Oh, you all right? Yeah, I'm just cold. We did it. Man. Ah, it's so cold. Oh, it's like fire. We're wet, we're cold, but we're on the right side of the river. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.